Hey everyone, welcome to Gadget Talk, the monthly creative cast show brought to you by the Geocache Talk Network. I am so excited about tonight. I, I know Chad and I have been talking with Chad, so we got two Chads on tonight with us. So uh, I may say Chad and they both will answer, so we'll go with it, all right? So that's what we're going to do. But I uh, just want to welcome everybody that's joining us in the chat room and everything. And if you are listening to this live and on YouTube or Facebook, Twitch, uh, Periscope, wherever you join us in on the chat room and just have a lot of fun in there. Um, but I also want to talk to you guys about Patreon. Patreon is, you can find it on the Geocache Talk website at geocachetalk.com and go on there or you can go head over to patreon.com forward slash geocache talk for more details. Patreon Patrons get the now famous blackout coin and many other cash items during the year, as well as special bonus invites to special events. Support level starts as little as $3. Uh, also tonight, we are, our sponsor is Logwork. Logwork, the creators of the fantastic logbook made with genuine right in the rain paper, the logbook designed for the micro containers of the present and future, geared towards the hider who wants to go caching rather than doing cash maintenance. Find them at logwork.com. And also, did you know that logwork is made with right in the rain paper? I mean, we just said it right there, but we have a special promotion for this month of September from right in the rain. And it is a 30% off of your entire order. If you put in the promo code geocache. So go over and check out right in the rain and get that. 30% off on anything that you order this month of September from right in the rain. All right. Now that's done. Now we can get to the fun stuff. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, so, well, welcome everybody to the podcast. Um, as you guys know from our uh, marketing or whatever, our Instagram, Facebook post that we have Tricasius on with us tonight. Um, and we'd like to thank him, thank him on. He is here from goal, uh, Gilby, North Dakota, which is going to be known of as what Disneyland of the North, I would think. Yeah, yeah so. there's a cashers. Uh, I think it started with uh, the pirate family started it with their kids saying they're going to Disneyland of geocaching. I think that's where it all started. Oh, that's great. And uh, I, I would imagine it would be from the videos I saw that Josh posted. Um, it definitely would be. And I'm actually looking forward to a trip up there at some point. Oh, oh, you awesome. and me both. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. We need to get a bunch of people together and go up there. Uh, I'm I'm ready for a road, good road trip. After yeah. all the stuff that's been going on, oh, most definitely ready for a road yeah. trip. Yeah, me too. So. Um, so let's go ahead and get into the questions. And then again, if anybody has a question in the chat room, go ahead and post it there in the chat, and then uh, we will pull it up uh, onto there onto the uh, screen, and then we'll ask Chad Tricasius. Uh, <laughs> The question. So, um, uh, first question here that we have for him is, uh, so tell us about yourself and what do you, uh, how did you get started caching? Uh, I'm married. I've, my wife uh, started geocaching with me. Her name is Jane, of course, but uh, her name is uh, the other half. Whenever we're at events, she always had to be the other half. <laughs> I've got uh, two kids. My son, Ryan, he works for uh, my father-in-law on the garbage route. So he's always picking me up oddball containers and weird things out of the garbage for me to tinker with. Uh, my daughter is in college right now at UND and Grand Forks here. And she's uh, one of my test dummies. So when I build a bunch of caches, they all come out and tinker with them, try to figure out how to get them open. Uh, I started about... Uh, 2008, I was a Boy Scout leader and the, uh, got a Boy Scout magazine with uh, the geocache in there. I thought that sounded neat. So as soon as I uh, was able to, ran out and grabbed the GPS and got started on my first cache. Oh, great. So really what do you do for a living that helps you create these caches? I'm a self-employed carpenter. So I get... Uh, Lots of scraps to use up. Uh, I'm fairly creative. I enjoy carving and turning bowls and all kinds of different things. So I, I enjoy uh, building things in the shop. I got a pretty well stocked shop. That's really cool. And I, as 
I know we're going to get to this a little bit here in a little bit, uh, the Pizza Ninja, but might as well go ahead and get to this really quick. Um, he wants to know, how do you get all those great ideas for the, all these different amazing caches? I, I wish I had a real good answer. <laughs> uh, I, I do keep a notebook next to my bed, and my wife will ask me what I'm drawing up now, and it'll be the middle of the night, and I'll be drawing something in the dark, and then the next morning I'll wake up, and i got to decipher what I drew. I'm sure it was amazing, but uh, <laughs> sometimes I don't always figure out what I had drew, drawn, but uh i i don't know where I, I they just pop up into my head and different things make things open and that's really you know, cool I've always been a tanker from when we were kids my parents would buy us uh the old 201 electronic kits and things like that legos so we were always building stuff when uh, growing up that's really cool so what got you into starting creating gadget caches? Uh, the very first cache I made, I thought it was just something really amazing back in 2008, was the hollowed out log. thought that was just amazing. The big stump out in the woods and, and thought I was really the top dog when I built that thing. And now I think that's such a stupid thing. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> So uh, there was another cacher in Gilby. And we both started about the same time. I did, we didn't know who each, we knew each other, but didn't know each that each of us had geocached. And uh, he had made a mention that maybe we should team up and make Gilby a Mecca. But sadly, he passed away fairly quick after that. And we never really did get the building too many together. Wow. Sad to hear that, but it sounds like kind of in some aspects, he inspired you to keep building these types of caches to in his maybe in his memory yeah he he had uh he did have a pretty nice shop too he would have done a great job building some of these caches he was very avid in geocaching and uh quite quite a guy all right so we have another question in here um from midwest drone pilot and now are you still a boy scout leader no i'm not uh we were in troop 80 in Gilpy, north dakota i did it when my son uh got out of it and I did it for a couple of years after that. But I believe I'm still the head representative in the area, but uh, <laughs> there's not a, there's actually not a scout troop in the area right now. Okay. Excellent. So what is the favorite cache that you've made? Uh, yeah. How, how do you answer that? You know, uh, I think Miss Daisy is pretty fun. It's one that you, uh, it looks like a big hair dryer. And you have to take it back out, get in your car, and race down the road about 40 miles an hour. And uh, air yeah. blows through it and lights up the LEDs on the side that, to give you the code for the, the uh, combination in the, the geocache. Uh, and that's, that's one of my favorites because I think it's kind of inventive. I've got several others that I, I'm pretty tickled with. Little Strong Man, I think, is a real fun one. Uh, yeah. It gets gets people thinking. Right. Now, on that, the Miss Daisy one, tell us how you created that. Is that always, I think that's just really unique, and um, <laughs> I just think it's really cool. It, it's so simple. It's All it is is an electric motor in here and the fan and the handle, and, and just from the two wires on the motor, run through uh, to LEDs and resistors. And you just pick the whichever ones you want to be the numbers, and and it, it's so stupid simple. It's I, I have had a few people ask me if they could copy it, and I said, of course you can. Just <laughs> you know, knock yourselves out. See, that's pretty cool. Guy, one particular guy in California, he uh, built one that looks like an airplane. So and it's at a at an airport. So uh, I'm really excited to. He's going to be in South Dakota. We're going to go down there in a couple of weeks and meet with him visit so That's so really you don't cool. have any batteries or any sorry Derek yeah you no, don't no, have any no, batteries got... or anything in there right so when no, the, that one when the no, fan no spins batteries. it's creating power which is powering the LED yeah so you have to yep. hit a certain Just... speed to get that much power right in there to... yep. yeah it's pretty cool that's that's actually a, such a simple brilliant thing <laughs> it, I would never yeah. have thought about it 
Hey, maybe Mike that's something we can do is for a build. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> knock yourselves out. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. It's just stupid simple. You know, it's so easy. Right. And Anybody could make them. See, that was, I would think that we'd have to use like an Arduino or something like that to be able to do that. It just, but it's, it's, it's overthinking it. And that's, that's what I think is really great. Yeah. That's <laughs> simple. Amazing. Yeah, mine are mine are all simple. You know, there's no high tech going on around here. It's pretty easy. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but, <laughs> but these Arduino ones you guys come up with uh, that just baffles me. I just can't yeah. wait to. When I run out of ideas, I'm jumping on the Arduino bandwagon. Yeah. Right, and and I I completely agree with Val here. Uh, it says stupid simple for Chad. For me, completely mind blowing. Oh, that's no. just that's just really. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I just think that's really cool. Uh, overthinking something, but I think sometimes the simplest gadgets and creative caches are even some of the best caches. And I just think that's, and that's probably why you have so many different um, favorite points on all your caches and why you have made it the Disneyland of the North because of your caches. Yeah, they're, they're all different. There's, there's not too many of them that, are the same some of them use the same principles but they're done in a different way uh like using reed switches uh reed switches are uh, a switch and when you put a magnet next to it it'll turn on so i uh, quite a few i've got maybe four of them that use reed switches and another very simple not a lot of thinking not a lot of wiring just got to know how how a circuit works and so reed switches are are a lot of fun they're used in uh, alarm systems on your doors and windows. It's real simple. You can get them off the, of course, internet. But so, real quick, back to that one with the fan. Is that mm -hmm. that has to be located next to a road, obviously, that you can drive down and get some speed? How fast do you have to typically get going? Is that a secret or <laughs> no? Not eighty-eight. <laughs> we'll start with that. Yeah. Uh, well, I think eighty-eight would be great. Cash. It's yeah. a back to the future uh, cash. <laughs> I've had that comment a few times that they're sad they didn't get to get the 88. It depends on the wind. It's 40 miles an hour. If it's calm, it's probably all it needs. If you're going with the wind, then you're getting up to 50, 55. But it really depends on the wind. And a lot of people well, turn around and go the other way. And The nice thing about not having to hit 88 is otherwise, if, if you did, you'd get a cash and a ticket. Exactly. So you wouldn't want yeah. that. So. <laughs> you get yeah. a cash and lose some cash. Yeah, yeah. exactly. One, one, <laughs> One caster said he did meet a cop while he had his arm out the window <laughs> in the winter time with this thing hanging out the window. And luckily he was going 55. Right. So uh, Hugh wants to know how many times, how many Miss Daisies get borrowed and, and not return? I have been super lucky out here. I've, I've only had one cash go missing, a strong man at the fair, some, uh, uh, Winnipeg geocachers up in Canada came down to find some caches and and it was December, January, somewhere in there and they sent me a DNF on it and I thought, how could you miss it? The thing's seven feet tall and it can't be buried in the snow, but somebody had picked it up and walked away with it. But That's the only one I've had missing in the Gilby area. Right. So here's another question and this is from Jerry. Asks, what do you make your... Um, how do you make your caches work in extreme weather of North Dakota? Cause you, I mean, they're not inside, they're outside like normal caches are. So how do you keep them working all the time? Uh, most, my caches are built fairly stout. I do sometimes put them outside in the winter time to test them before I actually put them out. Uh, they're, they're built out of, a lot of them are built out of Trex decking material, the plastic decking material. Uh, being a carpenter, I've got lots of scraps of that laying around. Uh, but like I say, I test and try them out and see if they work. And through weather, rainy and winter, and that's really great. That's really cool. So, and then, um, what is the favorite cache that you have done? Not not one that you've created, but which one have you? What's your favorite cache that you've ever done? I've been watching one called the Ravens Labyrinth in oh, uh, yeah. Prescott, Arizona. <laughs> yeah, that, is, that it was just amazing. It, it is, uh, it's set up as a maze. 
So you got to tilt the table in certain directions to make it work. And at each stop, it's a computer is talking to you and lights are going off. And I've been wanting to get out to that cache for a long time and finally was able to last or the last uh, January. And it, it's just amazing. I wish I would have had more time because there's a couple of, there's three stages, I think. And if you get to the third stage, they actually, have, you have, uh, you can get dinner for two, you get your name on a plaque. It, it was just an amazing cache, all electronic. They, at this, this city actually built a shelter over the top of it. Uh, it it's just an amazing cache. Everybody should go see the, the Raven's Labyrinth. Yeah, I've heard about that one. Have you heard about that one, Chad? I, I, I've seen it online. I actually, I think I've seen some pictures or videos of it. It looks sure. looks great. I would love to. I would love to find it. I'd yep. love to find yep. a lot of caches yeah. out. Another there. road trip. Yeah. <laughs> one, one one way it hinges up, and it's the maps and stuff of the trails are there. And then on the back side, there's another lock, and then it flips up, and that's where the geocache is. It's it's just really amazing. And so, how long did you did it take you to do that cache? I want to say, so if you tip it and it falls in the wrong hole, then you got to start over. I want to say we worked on it maybe 16 times before we got to the first uh, stage, and that opens up the uh, uh, log book so you can sign your name. And it was starting to get dark and rainy, and we decided we had enough from that one. Yeah. But it would have been fun to stick around and and – try to get a couple more, try it a little more, but that was right. a lot of fun. Right. And Rama cats, um, let me know when you're going, I might meet you there. Yeah. And Ch Chad, we'll all, just convert, we'll all converge on it. And then I we'll just to drive to his house and do his caches. Oh yeah. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, another question here, um, that's not on the questionnaire, but, um, when you find a cache, just something kind of, I do. And I think other cache builders do or gadget cache builders. When you find a cache like that, do you sit there and look at it and go, how did they do this? And how was it built? And you just kind of look it over and figure it out. Yeah. It's like, Oh, that yeah, was pretty like, simple or that's genius yeah. that they did it that way. Yeah. The, he made the, you know, so it's a marble that rolls around. He actually made a, a wooden contraption that brought the marble up to the spot and uh, it's all hand done. It's just, it's just amazing. It's, I can't say enough good things about that cache. Uh, I would have loved to meet the guy. He he actually adopted all his caches out. He has several out in, in uh, Arizona, Prescott, Arizona. And uh, so I don't think he geocaches anymore, but he built some beautiful caches. Wow. So, yeah, that's <laughs> – I would love to find him, but um, – so what's the average time or thought process time from when you actually think of a build to where it's completed? It, it depends on how simple I might make one that it's just spring loaded and the side comes down. You know, I can get that done in the evening or I might spend a couple weeks on one if it, uh, it's a little more involved. And then I might, hit a wall on one thinking it's going to work this way and it doesn't. So then I hit a wall, I put it on a shelf for a while and I'll come back to it in a month or two. Or So I've got a shelf of started geocaches and I got another shelf of built geocaches. Uh, it, it Sometimes I, like I say, I've got a, a stock of started caches that I'm working on all the time. Yeah. I was going to ask you that. I think we all have that. <laughs> yeah, shelf. I, I asked so. the same thing with room of cats, right? Where's that? I want to see the mm. area where you have the caches that you started working on that you haven't finished. You maybe you you want to change. You're not happy with. That's the part of people's shop I want to see because I want to see what right. their ideas are. Yeah, and that's that part of having my kids come out and test them. You know, yeah. I'll, they'll start on one and then I'll see which direction they're going. And that well, I got to change that or make it a little easier because they're going the wrong way and build it a little tougher if they try to to break into it and. But yeah, there are a lot of caches that I've started and it didn't quite work out the way I'd planned. Right. Uh, that's, that's how a lot of mine are too. So sure. I have, where did it go? There it is. Had a, there's a question from Alan says, do you use gold buttons on your carpentry jobs? <laughs> so that must be an inside long, joke. <laughs> yeah. There was <laughs> so, a long night auction. That. There was an online auction and I went to pick up the stuff. And when I got there, the guy said, if there's any 
any of these uh, items that you want, just make an offer. And there was 22 totes sitting there. I thought, well, they're nice totes. I, I said, I'll give you $5 for them totes. And he says, yep, take them. Well, so I opened up the first tote and they're full of these little gold buttons, like to sew on a jacket or a shirt or whatever. And so there's 22 totes of these gold buttons. So I've been giving away boxes of these buttons for <laughs> five years or better. So I've got a several caches that use these gold buttons. The last, uh, the last YouTube video that Josh put out in that treasure chest was just a handful of them gold buttons. But so it, it, there's a lot of gold buttons in the guildy area. That's that's funny. That's funny. Yeah. So kind of like how Chad used to give out bouncy balls. Now the other Chad gives out gold buttons. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> they see me coming, they turn around. Yeah. You ought to get like a shirt and just have just gold buttons everywhere. Awesome. On it. That's an awesome idea. Yeah. <laughs> Good yeah, one to put. Christmas event here in, in Fargo Moorhead area, and, and uh, when I come in, I'm usually carrying one of them big orange puff cheese ball cans full of gold buttons and everybody knows <laughs> right away what it is. That's funny. And it's kind of a, a white elephant gift and nobody seems to pick that one. I don't know why. You ought to uh, make it a competition. How many gold buttons are in this, in this jar? Yeah, there you go. There, there. Actually, I think we did do that uh, a couple years ago. We had an event up in, in uh, Bemidji that she did that. <laughs> um Garrett, yeah, I was about to pull the same thing up. Instead of red herrings, you got gold herrings. Mm. <laughs> and I like Roomba Cats has a has a great expl or a, a great uh, saying for that uh, the caches that you haven't quite finished. He calls it uh, the shelf of shame. Yeah. <laughs> so that's actually great. I've never heard of that, but uh, I'm gonna start using that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and there's a couple of mine that are up there too. And some of them you've even seen on my videos as those are being built at the same time that you're seeing it. And some of them are still back there as I'm still tinkering with them too. So, um, so Roma cats wants to know, uh, how many caches have you built, um, having mid built right now? Uh, I, I couldn't tell you. I've got, I've got several of them. I, I've got this, uh, Ziploc bag is full of ideas, uh, of caches to build and, some of them I'm still working on, but there's there's a few I've got going. That's a good list of, or that's a good bag of uh, ideas. <laughs> that's a yeah. Um, hopefully nobody from the chat room is going to come and steal those ideas from you. You might want to put those in a a, a really uh, a D uh, D five uh, cache that you build to keep sure. those safe. <laughs> yeah, I, I never know how to. Uh, list them as far as difficulty on the caches. Some caches, the people figure them out real easy, and and others, it's like, well, how are you supposed to do that? And I get my number is on most of the caches, so I'm getting calls all the time, which is fine. I enjoy visiting with them and helping them out. Right, and Chad, uh, Chad Bounce Bounce, and I were discussing that right before the show too. How do we rate our caches on difficulty? Because to us, they're easy because we came yeah. up with them. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's where what you were talking about. I use my kids as well as uh, um, beta testers uh, to go through to see how they, if they can figure it out and how difficult they think it is. Of course, my beta testers are 10 and 12. So um, it's still hard to rate from, from some of mine. <laughs> right. Yep. And, and that's, you know, my kids, I think are starting to think my way. So maybe that's not an easy way to go either. All right. Uh, so, yeah. So it looks like we're getting, we're having a bid going on. We might be able to get raise some extra money here. Yeah, so there's, we I'm have $5 for, for the plastic bag. Of oh, I've the, got lots uh, of plastic ideas. bags. <laughs> well, for the, I think he's referring to the plastic bag of your ideas. So we got $5, oh. but I don't think he's oh. going to let it go for $5. Yeah. So the bid's got to keep coming up higher. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I pass, I skipped over a question. It looks like Derek. Uh, and actually it looks like Roomba cats wanted to have asked the same thing on here. Uh, what, in, uh, what inspires you, what, sorry, here, here, inspires you on your caches, right? To come up with such an unique caches. Um, I've got a cat up here too now. Uh, 
it, it, it's all kinds of different things. Like I say, my son comes along and brings some piece of junk out of the garbage and and they'll fiddle with it and think, oh yeah, that could make turned into something. Uh, it, it can be a game that we're playing. It, just all all kinds of different things that come to mind. And uh, one one in, event that I go to is in Bemidji by a cashier named Pink Monkey. She puts on the Maker Madness, she calls it. So you show up on the first event and you bring a piece of junk of some whatever. Uh, so the crappy dog cache that I built that <laughs> somebody had brought a wire dog. And so you go to the event with your piece of junk, then you draw and you get to bring a different piece of junk home and you have to make a cache out of that. So it, it's really fun to see what other people come up with as far as the, the containers, how they make it work. And so you take it home, you get a month to, and you bring it back and you build whatever out of it. So crappy dog cash came out of that. I had a uh, crutch that you used to have to pump up the bottom to shoot a bison tube out. Uh, lots, lots of weird things come from that event. It's, it's always fun to see what they build. That sounds like a really fun event. It yeah. is. Yep. So here was another question. What is a simple gadget that someone could build with no carpentry or electro skills? Well, if he's smart enough to fly a drone, I don't <laughs> think. <laughs> uh, there's, you don't have to be real good at carpentry to build a birdhouse. Uh, you build it with a handsaw easy enough. You can get plans off the internet if you need. But it, it's a, that's a simple one to build. And then there's all kinds of little triggers that you can make to drop a cash out, whether you're using a battery-powered motor or just a simple trigger like West Virginia Kim has showed on his YouTube channel. Uh, most of mine, like I say, are fairly simple. It's you just need to know that circuit goes in a circle from plus to negative and and it, put a light or battery or switch in there and, and you've got a circuit. So that's all. Okay. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy working on them. Right. Yeah. So, and here's another question. Uh, do you have any tips for someone who is just starting out building gadgets? West Virginia, Tim's got some fairly easy caches to make. Uh, some of them are very ingenious. He's got some smart caches, of course, but and, and he shows you from step one, it seems like, how to build the box and how what goes into the inside, making them work. That's a good way to start watching the Gadget Talk show here. Of course, they've got some pretty neat containers and, and ways of opening up caches also. But there's There are a lot of YouTube tips and, and uh, Geocache, I think, even has a uh, one of their forums is all about fun caches to make. Okay. Yeah. So, Thanks for the plug there for that. We have, we have a build coming up later this month as well. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, a question that I get asked quite a bit is if I'm just starting out building and I need to buy a tool for my shop, what tool should I buy? So what tool would you, do you use the most and would you recommend buying? Uh, cable saw would probably be the first thing because you can cross cut or cut lengthwise when the table saw for me, anyway, table saw is indispensable. The uh, miter box would be second for me, but you can get a lot done with just a jigsaw and uh, a drill, you know, anything like that. I, I've got several tools here to use. If I need to turn metal, I've got a metal lathe we can use. And, but I, I would say a table saw, you can do a lot of work with a table saw as far as uh, length, and width and cutting rabbits if you need to and the table saw i think is the first thing i would get so you must have a good size shop then i uh, i've got a lot of stuff <laughs> <laughs> shop size is relative enough. right yes yeah, so size is relative is big enough yeah <laughs> i don't have a metal lathe it's i would love to get one but i don't know where i'd put it yeah, my, my dad's got a metal lathe. He's just a mile away. My neighbor's just a mile away. He's got a metal lathe. And so if 
and it's funny how much metal work I've done on my wood lathe. It's not ideal, but uh, I've done quite a bit of metal work on that. Oh, that's really cool. Now, where are all your, most of your caches are, where are they located? They're not really urban caches. They're actually more out in the woods, correct? Yeah. Uh, most of my caches are just in shelter belts between fields. And I would say within, within five, 10 miles of, of my place, they're all scattered all around. Uh, I've got a few in Grand Forks, nearest big city around here. And, uh, but those I have more troubles with. Usually I'm, I'm, uh, I'll have them hidden in, in the Gilby area. Okay. Because those that are, um, cause you put out a lot of the caches for the, the tour up there for the Fargo tour as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gia cash has put on a Fargo more at geo tour and she's really had a lot of success with it. She built a lot of fun caches. Uh, I helped her out with a few of them. Onion pond built, built this huge ammo can and, uh, M and M O built a lot of little birdhouses. So it was a lot of fun. We built a lot of fun, interesting caches, and she put them in such neat areas. Uh, she's she's got cashers coming from all over the place to see the geo tour. That's really cool. Uh, <laughs> Did you have an earthquake? Oh, darn cat! cat. cat. Darn cat! Yeah. Romba cat started something last time. Yeah, huh? I know he did. <laughs> so this one it, just learned to jump on the tables. This is the first uh, time I've seen her do that. So Gia has a question. How do you get go about uh, explaining geocaching to people of Gilby? Do they realize their tiny town is a hot spot for geocachers from all around the world? Uh, a few of them do. The, the hardware store is across from a real simple geocache that somebody had put out that the hipster had put out before he passed away. And so he was aware of it. And he's always, ex he's been really excited every time I stop in there. He goes, well, did that guy put one of them thingies on the YouTube thing? So he's, I'm always <laughs> having to pull that up for him. And uh, he's an older gentleman. So he, he likes watching them and, and he giggles at all the time. He says, I got to meet this guy. He seems pretty fun. So, but uh, it, it, not everybody, of course, knows about it. And I don't think they know it to the extent to how, I don't know, popular is the right word, but uh, the fun caches that are out around Gilby. There there are a few caches around here. They only do the Gilby, and then once they get outside of Gilby, they well, what the heck happened? You know, they were so fun there when we were around Gilby. Right, you kind of got them spoiled. <laughs> yeah, I, I never know what to say to new cachers when they, they come here and they've got five fines, you know, or they just started in Gilby. If I should email them and say, hey, you know, maybe you should go look at Walmarts and see what you find at the lamp skirts and stuff first. But <laughs> yeah, oops. It's, uh, that was, but yeah, did it always? I'll go to this one, then I'll jump to the next one. Uh, Ram Cat says, did driving Miss Daisy always require someone to stick it out the car window, or did it just come to that? You have to have it out in the wind. I mean, if you brought a blower with you, that's actually how I tested it to start to see if the, the idea would work and uh, use my air compressor. And then I took it out into the pickup and wired up crudely and took it out and see if it worked. And it worked worked good the first shot. So, yeah, it was always made to get up on the highway and run down the road. That's great. So, and then I saw a comment up here. Um, have you had to talk to any of the bomb squad about any of your <laughs> caches and, and, and gone to special training for them? <laughs> yeah, uh, I had a geocache named Larry's Cryptix. Uh, it was a real colorful cryptix made out of two-inch PVC. And I got a call from a friend of mine and said, hey, uh, there's a lot of action going by your geocache. Uh, and this was in Grand Forks in, uh, in a set of trees. Nobody's around. So called up the police and say, you might be looking at my geocache, but of course, by that time, it was too late. And, <laughs> and if the bomb squad's called out, they're going to blow something up. But So we contacted them and said, hey, we'd like to teach you about geocaching. And they said, yes, yeah, come on out. We've got a meeting on a Monday or whatever. And so Brian, Jerry, and I all went there and 
taught them geocaching. They, a lot of them had downloaded it onto their phones and and uh, visited about geocaching. And uh, Jerry even offered to give them, if they gave him a call, he'd walk up and open it for them. And uh, after after the teaching them about geocaching, we uh, they invited us into the back shed and showed us all their trucks and they took their robots out and they explained to me uh, so you know once they got there it was a some college kids were playing lacrosse in the field and the ball rolled it out into the trees and tucked down into the hollow of a tree was my geocache and they called the police and police came out the bomb squad came out and and uh so they brought their robot out there and the first robot couldn't get their it's pincher around it to drag it out and the big next robot goes in but his camera was hitting the side of the tree before it could reach and then they send the guy out in his big uniform and he was going to lasso it and then have a robot pull it out and that didn't work and they ended up just bringing a shotgun on a tripod more or less and blow the end of it off and, and uh, that's that's about it i guess but they they weren't mad or anything but so I, I have a cache behind my house called uh, You Be the Judge. And it's actually, there's a robot arm. And I've got a little mini cryptics in there, which isn't the geocache. It's hidden under a pile of rocks or sticks. or It's in different spots in there. But it's just, like I say, it's just a robot arm that you control to, to pull it out and drop it through the right hole. That's really cool. And I think there needs to be more training of bomb squads uh, on geocaching because I've I've had a couple of friends that uh, some of their caches have been blown up too. Oh, so, one, there's one that was painted really nice too. I mean, the guy oh, it was just beautiful. It. Yeah, it was. What well, was funny though? It was called. Um, it was all called Rings of Fire. Yeah, it was all to the Johnny Cash song. So I said, yeah. well, if it had to go, it went the right way. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one, the newspaper said it was dark and suspicious. And the uh, bomb squad said I should have had geocaching on it. But if you go to Larry's Cryptics, you'll see on the picture, there's a little two-year-old playing with it. It says geocache on it. It's painted bright greens and yellows and reds and orange. And so it's a little funny that they, uh, they, they thought it was dark and suspicious. <laughs> but if you're calling the bomb squad out, I'm going to blow something up, no matter what. Yeah, I mean, hey, it, why not? I mean, they oh, got to yeah. come out for a show, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's like well, you, you, you don't go to a fireworks show without seeing something blow up. Yeah. I actually have the, uh, the, the shotgun cartridge that they blew it up with. So they point the shotgun barrel at the bottom of the cache to blow the end off of it to, so it can't build up the pressure. And the guy said, yeah, I think this is even the one we use. So I've got that <laughs> in my bag of probably my, my shelf of shame, I suppose I should call it, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'd think that the bomb squads would have an SOP now that you automatically look up the geocaching app if you if you go to a bomb. Make sure it's not a geocache. Yeah, but I could very easily make, you know, swap it out. If I was a bad geocacher, I could easily put a different container there. So I don't fault them at all. I mean, it's, no. it's, it was the smart thing to do. And no, they're just keeping us safe. And that's, and the, the funny thing is, I think it was the day or two after I had a geocacher that didn't have a smartphone come out and he just had it on his GPS. So he came up and, and he, he called me up he says, I can't find this geocache. And I thought he was joking with me. And I said, well, if, if you see a piece of plastic laying around, just sign one of them pieces. And, <laughs> he didn't know what I was talking about. So he ended up calling a friend of theirs in Minneapolis to look it up and see that it had been blown up. So so Geocaching just released some new attributes, and I, I kind of agree with Ramakats. <laughs> he should have added this one, not a bomb. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and you're talking about Cryptex. I remember seeing one of Josh's videos at the Moorhead, and it was at a you had to use like a key and the key actually was when you pulled the key out, the pins on it is what actually opened up the cache. Yeah, I thought that yeah. was absolutely ingenious. The way you I, use I that, that cryptex. Yeah. 
That was a good idea. Uh, Gia had one at a it was a uh, auto garage uh, repair place, and the the owner said he'd love to have one there if it was auto related somehow. That'd be great. And so I, it just came to me. Hey, I could make that into the odometer, and and uh, he was so tickled. We brought it there to show it to him uh, a couple weeks before we could put it. We put it up. And he says, hey, can I keep this here and I'll show everybody? And so he had it in his office and he would invite people back to his office. And, hey, you got to come and see this stupid box this guy made. And, <laughs> and uh, so he was just tickled to death. Um, and it used to just have a knob on the end. And he he came over. He says, hey, can you put these keys on that thing instead of the knob? And because he was so tickled, he wanted to be a set of keys hanging off of there. But, yeah, that's a cool, cool cache. I, I enjoyed making that one. Yeah, I, that was I really that was really cool. I really like that one. So, all right. So, and I, I know with building gadgets and all that, what is kind of your maintenance situation on your gadget caches? Do you have a lot of maintenance issues, or pretty much when you build them, it's pretty much they're good to go? Most of mine are pretty durable. Uh, I build them pretty pretty strong. Like I say, I, I have my kids come out and test them. They sit outside in the winter before I put them out a lot of times. So I try to make them really strong. I've, I've, I can't believe how lucky I have been as far as uh, them not disappearing. I, none of mine, not many of mine are cabled. They can uh, just pick up the ammo can and walk away with it if they wanted to. But uh, maintenance has really been pretty minimal. A few of mine are battery powered and... I maybe have changed the battery on a, a couple of them, not too many of them. I'll check them every once in a while. Uh, cashers around here are pretty good at to let me know if there is a problem, and but most of the time mine mine work pretty well. And that's yeah. that's really cool. Yeah. That's good because <laughs> I know Chad and I ours. Well, if a lot of mine that were it would be out right now, but it would yeah the maintenance issues has always been some some problems. Yeah, yeah, make them waterproof and and super strong. You know, I have a saying: if you make them idiot proof, somebody's going to come up with a better idiot at some point. But, <laughs> but try, try to make them as idiot proof as you can. Right, because I know on the video where it was Josh's, what's like an escape room, he was so shocked that that all that those electronics was right there, laying in a pipe on the ground. And that particular container is actually a, a friend of mine is in the uh, National Guard. And I think that container either held landmines uh, stacked in there. So it's it's a very strong container, very sealed very well. It's got a nice screw top that tightens down. And But uh, he's, he's given me a few uh, containers from the, the from there. So I just think that's absolutely hilarious because we we're talking about the bomb stuff earlier. Yeah. Here's the, here's your container that used was used to hold landmines. Now, mm -hmm. did you take that to the bomb squad before you put it out? Yeah, he, he's <laughs> in the National Guard and he's an ordnance instructor, so he knows all about bombs. And so he was one of the first ones I got a text from was from him, so letting me know what what they used to blow it up. And but uh, he he thought he thought it was pretty darn funny. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Those are pretty much just big round ammo cans. Yeah, yeah. It's, I've got I've got one in the back here that's five feet long. Uh, wow. That one is probably two and a half, three feet. But there's one. Then uh, at some point, I think I'm going to turn it into a missile. But I'm a little. <laughs> I'm wondering how far I want to go with that, putting fins and whatnot. So. Right. So here's a question: When Josh was doing your strongman one, um, and I think we all saw this when this happened. Did he yeah. actually break the head of that hammer? I, I yes, he did. Uh, <laughs> he lied the whole time. The guy was way stronger than he thought he is. But yeah, he. I think he purposely did it. Uh, <laughs> that that's probably the third time I've maybe replaced that hammer. Uh, it, it made me laugh because Gia was the next one that did it after after him, and she sent me a text. She said. I think that guy broke that hammer. And I said, no, really? He said, yeah, I'm pretty sure he broke it. So <laughs> it, it's no big deal. I've, I, caches break 
and it, it, like I say, I can't fault anybody. It's, if you want to get in, get in. But yeah, but most of mine are, are simple enough, I think. You can figure yeah. them out. Yeah, yeah, I'm surprised that Josh isn't in the chat room tonight. Wow. <laughs> well, I think something like that, though, that's more of an engineering issue there when it was designed. Yes. <laughs> you shouldn't be able to break that much. So he's actually I'm doing you a favor. He's testing it, and hey, it's not yeah. strong enough. Yeah. Or you can yeah. only get 20 hits out of it, and you got to replace it. Yeah, that one does take a quite a beating. I mean, you have to really hit it. It's it's not as easy as uh, just swinging the hammer. You have to really put a lot into it. Uh, I, I kind of weighted it a little bit so it, it isn't just pop open. Right. Uh, is it actually a rubber mallet head or is it something? Oh, that's a, so that's a log. It's a piece of wood called ironwood. So it's just right. a cut off piece of log and I stuck a metal pipe handle in it and uh but yeah you you have to really smack it wow and i've seen one of the video uh, not a video but one of the pictures from that cash page where it shot up and hit the guy in the top of the head and he, he was bleeding and said that was like the best cash he's ever done yeah he was from florida and he he logged logged the cash and i seen the pictures and i i contacted him right away I actually had used to have a hard hat hanging on the cache, but it's <laughs> disappeared a long time ago. But he uh, he thought it was funnier than heck. I, I just felt terrible. I said I'd like to be right over there with bandage and stuff, but he said, "No, heck, no, I'm good, I'm fine." So, but uh, it it looks pretty scary <laughs> the amount of blood coming out of his head. That could. That could be a new attribute. Draws blood. May draw blood. Yeah. May draw. yeah. Hey, yeah. And, and, and just I mean, us cashers, we want stuff to make have good stories, and that just makes yeah, for a right. good story. And 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 Memory. scars, scars are like <laughs> badges of cur uh, badges of courage and badges of honor. Yeah. So, yeah, my wife has one of them scars on her leg when we're <laughs> out finding caches. Ooh. So here's another question. What is the strangest call you have gotten from a cashier at one of your caches? Oh, man. Uh, I, I, I don't know what, what the, the answer would be on there. I've had people get stuck, and I've gone out to pull them out. Um, I don't know what, what was the strangest one would be. I'm trying to think if Amy has ever come up with a, odd calls. I'm guessing she must have, but so uh, then let's let's change that to what's the most common question you get? How do I get into this damn thing? Yeah. <laughs> Derek and I were just talking about that actually right before the show. Yeah. I yeah. get a lot of text messages and phone calls, and people are like, I'm at your cash, I need help. Okay, well, what's the cash name? I, I got a lot of right. caches, right? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Or they'll have to look it up, you know, and stuff. And it's kind of funny that that's the most yeah. that's the question i usually see first thing is i'm at your cash i need help but they don't yeah, know the name yeah of yeah. It. yeah so finally i've smartened up in the last few months i actually put the codes all in my phone so now if they call how do i get into this i actually have the combination in my phone which i don't know why it took me so long to figure that out but uh, but some i'm happy to help like i say my phone number is on most of my caches and uh, I answer a lot more spam calls than I used to because <laughs> I never know who's calling. But uh, I, like I say, I'm happy to help out any way I can. Yeah. And Alan here actually asked uh, a good question on something that I always think that you should have as far as almost uh, a rating is the frustration <laughs> rating. Um, I've done some puzzle cache. I'm not a great puzzle person. So I've done some puzzle, puzzle caches that the frustration level should be right up there yeah yeah i've got <laughs> one called black sheep so it's it's i've had it for several years and it's just a i think it's a juice bottle with film cans in it and they're all white film cans except for one black one and every one of them's got something a trinket in it but the black one of course is the one that's got the log so that one he, his son thought it really needed to have frustration points for that one instead of favorite points. But that's that's the cash he's referring to. And it, it's a pain in the butt. I don't, I don't even think it should be out there anymore, but <laughs> it's very frustrating. And I have another one called frustration that is just a simple maze tube that pulls out, but putting it back together is just a pain in the butt. 
<laughs> it's no, it's getting it apart. It's not so tough, but putting it back. Oh man, that's frustrating. All right. So, and here's another question. What was, what is your most favorite log that has been written about one of your caches? A uh, little strong man. So I've got big strong man and you have to smack it to get the tube out. Little strong man is, is uh, a little, it's just a tiny one. But of course, the container doesn't come out at all. The, the log is in the handle. Uh, I get a lot of people uh, making jokes about that one. I took them how many times they hit it and hit it and hit it before they finally dawned on them. Uh, Miss Daisy probably gets a lot of pretty good ones. I really enjoy going to events and actually hearing the story outside of what they wrote down on the log and what, what it took them to figure out some of the caches. But this, uh, I do enjoy reading the, the logs. That's really cool. And I know uh, Little Strong Man, uh, Joshua, highlighted that one. And by what you saw in the video, it took him a little while to figure it out, too. So Yeah. Yeah. You could see as all of a sudden it dawned on him in, during the video. It, it, it's funny to see that. So, all right. Here's another question. Um, do most of your caches have red herrings like you do on Little Strong Man? Uh, I wouldn't say most of them. A uh, few of them do. Uh, the yeah, really fun, interesting device has a lot of red herrings on that one. I've got a few that uh, do have that. Uh, I debate whether I should put them on because it just frustrates more people and gets them going in the wrong direction, which I guess is okay. I've got a cryptics nearby that uh, you have to spell out a word and you have to spell out midway and so you turn the cryptics to the midway and it won't open well then you have to check your id and there's actually two i's and two d's on that ring so you have to get the right id uh, oh, so wow. it, it's a lot of people are frustrated with that one like what do the heck they mean by check your id so <laughs> but that one can kind of be a little bit mean. Yeah. And and Ruba Cats here has a good question. Yeah. How many gonna... times have you had to solve your own gadget cache because you forgot how to open it? <laughs> that's that's the other point of having the combinations in my phone. I don't have to go through through the the uh, all the steps to get into them. So like yeah. I say, I don't know why I didn't think of that a long time ago. Yeah, and, I, and earlier Rumble Cats said the same thing too. It's like I got to do that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, I have them in my phone and on my laptop. I have a label maker. I labeled, printed them all out and stuff because I don't want to have to go through figuring it out myself. I actually have that ammo can plastic insert that we showed last week on the build uh, with mm. all the flashing LED lights. I forgot the code to that, and I don't want to go through and figure it out. So mm. just plug it into the computer. And, oh, just yeah. change it. Just <laughs> I think I wrote a different one over the top of it. So. Oh, mm. okay. I'll give it to someone else and say, hey, figure this out. <laughs> yeah. once once in a while i'll actually have the code on the container somewhere too it might not be the numbers it might be letters it might and then of course i forget what the comp the uh top secret code i've got on it is anyway but right so, i know what i do for a code i'll actually on the since i use cashly i'll do a, a personal note on mm. there and i'll actually have the code actually on the cache itself so if sure. somebody calls me or if they message me i can just pop over to there and just it's 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 this or that so it's actually already on the on my personal note on that cache oh, that's so that's, that's that's the way i do do mine mm -hmm. so and um gary actually asked something up here earlier do most of your caches ha um oh no i'm sorry Wrong way. Yeah, it, it moved just right when you clicked it. I yeah, saw yeah. It. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, my own screen stole uh, frozen. Uh, do most of your caches have red herrings? A, a few do, but not not a lot of them. I, I like, uh, like I say, sometimes it leads person off to the wrong direction, and then that really befuddles them. And so some some do just to screw with people. Uh, I guess I kind of enjoy screwing with people. I guess so. So. Now, do you have a, a Tricasius logo you could add to your caches? Do you have something that you add to it all the time or like a specific logo? No, uh, don't have anything like that. 
I'm not that creative, I guess. Because I know yeah. you on that one you have that's a puzzle um, with the read switches, you have it as your um, path yeah. tag. Yep, and there's actually a path tag in the picture or in that on the door of that one, so you can so you know what you're trying to make. But uh, yeah, I don't have a necessarily have a logo. Okay. So, um, is there anything else that you'd like to share about your caches or anything that really stands out to you? Um, I, I really enjoy making caches. It's it's a lot of fun. I get uh, I, lately. I've been gotten a few emails from Germany, Australia, a few places in the United States about uh, building caches. How they this one was made or that one was made. I've uh, just north of us, Pemben and Walsh County uh, Historic Society hired me to make a bunch of caches at all these historic spots. So they they picked the spot, they wrote up all the history. I just had to come up with a container of some sort to put it in each spot, and they've just thought it's been a blast. How how much uh, pop people have been coming out to the area to find them. So that that's been a lot of fun. So every year we put out four, five, six caches in in the two counties. Uh, so they, like I say, they do all the work, all the uh, uh, permissions and that. Uh, lately, I've made a couple of caches for the Winnipeg Zoo in Canada. Uh, a gal down there by name of Skokie, she asked if I'd be interested in making her a cache. So I made a couple two years ago, and then she renews them every two years. So. I actually had given her one, a second one, or a third one, I guess, uh, last year for her to use. And but of course, with the border being closed, I can't get down there to to go to her event if if she, if they're allowed to have it even. But I enjoy, like I say, I enjoy making caches. It's been a lot of fun meeting so many different people, and uh, and a few cashers that have been down here have asked if I'd make them. A cache like this one or that one, and yeah, you know, I'm usually pretty happy to make it if I can. Um, so G here asks a question again: uh, Will they be seeing another Gilby Gone Wild event in the future? <laughs> so last winter we were at an event, and uh, Whiskey Sours came up with the schedule all the events that were going on this year. And one of the events she put on there was uh, Gilby Gone Wild. And I said, well, what is that? And they said, well, you're going to be putting on an event in Gilby this year, aren't you? And I said, I guess I am now. And she said, well, you have to have 30 caches out and this and that. And so uh, Gia Caches, Wise Family M&Ms, the other half, Genies, Green and Fargo, and Purple Turtles, we all kind of got together and a few others and decided we'd put on a Gilby Goes Wild, Gilby Gone Wild event. Uh, I put out 17 caches, actually, and Gia made all these posters. Brian printed them up for me, and we had a lot of fun. We had ended up, even with all the COVID stuff going on, we had 120 people show up from uh, seven different states and it was a lot of fun we actually practiced somewhat social distancing as well as we could and and uh, it, it was a lot of fun there was a lot of a lot of people came out did my caches and uh, came back to the event and visited laughed and that that's my favorite thing seeing people laugh about the caches that they've done and how it goofed with them and that type yeah, I agree. Hearing about people's experiences when they're finding your cash or something you created is is the most rewarding thing over anything. Yeah. So, so. they're already saying I have to do it again next year. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, putting out 30 cash thing, that might have to go by the wind. But. I'll have to watch <laughs> for that event. Yep. Another road trip. Another yeah. road yep. trip. I got to so, retire soon so I can do all these road trips. Yeah. We all? <laughs> so now you were mm -hmm. talking about the the historical um caches that you were making for them and they gave you some trackables correct yeah yeah i've got 
a few trackables. I don't know if you can see that. So I've got probably four of them. Like I say, if you guys want to give them away somehow or another, I'll be happy to send them out. Uh, they they put them out kind of a promotion. They gave me a, a whole bunch of them to give away. So I'd be tickled to give them give them give them out to you guys if you want to have, figure out a way to get rid of them. Yeah, I was thinking, and we were talking about this a little bit before the show started. Was um, if you want to email us or host tag us in on Instagram, um, you know, the build that we did last month, the end of uh, last week or the end of last month, which was the Arduino build with the, um, the LEDs and all that. If you build that and you publish it and put it out, tag us in the post and we will choose, um, somebody to get those, one of those trackables. Yeah. And, and we you get can email of. us, email us, uh, the GC code as well at the gadget, uh, gadget talk podcast at gmail.com right uh, there as well. So that'd be great. Right. And you can tag us at uh, the gadget talk podcast on Instagram and as well. So we can see the pictures of that, but email us the GC code and then we'll go check it out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like I say, I'd be happy to send you guys four of them. If you need more, let me know. I got, I've got a few of them. Nice. All right. And so the next time you do your event, looks like Rama cats wants to, uh, he can bring up some caches for you on that. Yeah, yeah, there you to, go. That's I'd love to bring work. some out. I can bring mm -hmm. quite a few of them out. Yeah. Or just puzzle yeah, boxes for people to find. That's one of the things that they were saying, well, maybe we should have a, uh, uh, gadget cash contest or something. Or I'm, I'm going to judge. I'm, yeah. I'm just going to judge. I want to judge too. <laughs> well, I don't want to <laughs> I teased uh, Jody at the maker event when I first started. She, it was given out by people's people's choice, and I think she got tired of me getting the, the <laughs> first place. So now it's judged by how pretty the colors are and and uh, different stupid things like that. <laughs> but uh, so I I teased Jody about that. It, it's a fun event. That's it for sure. Yeah, Gia says if you plan a trip to Gilby, make sure that you stock up on favorite points. Uh, you want to give one to every cash, and so I got a little bit of time. Got to go get some extra cash so I can stock up on those favorite points. So whenever we do make it to Gilby, I got some for you. Yeah, <laughs> and someone out there, someone earlier asked where either there was good places to eat or where were the good places to eat there in Gilby. Well, there's there's not a lot of places around here. Uh, so I end up, I actually invite several people home for to my place for hamburgers or something like that if if it's dinner time. And But uh, really, there's not a lot going on in Gilby, the hardware store and the bar. And, uh, <laughs> so your kitchen is the best place to eat? Yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> I, I do keep a stockpile of hamburgers nice. usually. Great. Um, so... Um, Perfect. Well, um, we're here just after seven o'clock now tonight. Um, if someone wants to get a hold of you, we have a lot of questions going on here. A lot we couldn't get to. Um, if someone wants to get a hold of you, um, is there a way they can get a hold of you? Ask any questions. Probably easiest is just through my geocaching uh, log. Okay. okay. Perfect. So just on your geocaching messenger. Yep. On there, under, I take it, Tricasius. Tricasius, yep. Yeah. And it's <laughs> without an O. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Perfect. Uh, and if anybody has any questions for the show, um, please send in an email as well to gadgettalkpodcast at gmail.com. Um, any questions, ideas, anything like that, make sure you email us that. Um, follow us on Instagram as well at Gadget Talk Podcast, And... Um, we also have a Gadget Talk uh, podcast on Facebook too, but I'm not right. sure how easy it is to find. No, and we do the. We're going to have some build part coming up uh, later uh, this week or next week, going up on there for our build coming up at the end of this month. And Chad, what are we building? So, due to popular demand, um, I've actually gotten quite a few emails about this uh, over the last few months, and then a lot last week. We're going to go ahead, and I'm going to break down and build the acrylic ammo can box. So um, I'll show you, I'll have them pre-cut and then I'll show you how, how you glue them together and glue the hinges on and 
all that. I mean, it shouldn't be too bad. It should be pretty simple. Um, what we'll do is go ahead and post sizes of acrylic you need to have them pre-cut if you want to cut them. Uh, I typically uh, will just cut them on a table saw. It's pretty simple to cut them there. Um, but again, it's, it's up to you, whatever you want to, however you want to cut them. Uh, and we'll also put a parts list for the hinge and the lock uh, on there as well. And the glue. Because the, 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 the glue, the, yes. the cement. Everything yeah, the is the big thing. Now on your table saw, when you're cutting that, um, since we're going to pre-cut, what type of blade is the best blade for those that would be cutting that? The highest tooth blade you can get would be the best. Um, I think I cut with an 80 tooth blade on mine. Um, but the highest tooth you can get is the best. Okay. And then make sure wear eye protection because acrylic slivers are the worst. <laughs> and right. They, and, and they fly. And make sure that you have your blade height at the right level. You don't want it super tall or right. anything like that. So yeah. um, we want to see everybody have their fingers yeah. at the end of the month. So, And then also, don't forget, uh, if you go to Right in the Rain and you put in the promo code GEOCACHE, you will get 30% off of your entire order this month of September. So go check out Right in the Rain. And that is going on for this entire month of September. So go to G uh, Right in the Rain. And order your logs, your pens, your pencils, all the different stuff from right in the rain. And put in geocache as the promo code and you will get 30% off of your order. Yeah, that's a great deal. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah. So next next week, the September or next the end of the month, September 29th, the ammo can insert. And then we're going to have Roomba Cats back on October 6th to actually do a build of one of his rocks or fake stumps, whichever one he chooses. Right. So make sure you tune in for that as well. That's going to be a lot of fun because it's a great way to hide a beautiful gadget cache is in a rock or in a stump. Whichever one he would chooses, it's still a really great way of doing it. Especially if it turns out like one of his. I don't know if mine would, but uh, he does no. a great job staining them and painting them and doing whatever, adding moss to them. So. Yeah, I think blown away by the containers that guy's got there. It's just oh. amazing. And then that he's got duplicates of them. Yeah, that, that, that blew me away too. It's just like, man, I just, I mean, that looks like from the movie. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, I'd probably try and make a log and it might look like the wrong type of log. So that's, it's going <laughs> <laughs> to be like, what kind of crappy cash is this? So. Yeah. Dog on crappy cash for sure. This was dropped by a T-Rex. Um, yeah. so, <laughs> so, but yeah, so we're literally looking forward to that. Uh, looking forward to this week's build. Uh, this this must build so and uh thanks chad tricasius for being on yes. with us uh tonight and today whenever you're watching this or listening to this really it was really great hearing you from you and being inspired by the different caches that you create it's just really awesome yeah that's what i think i i really enjoy is hearing people want to make one of a copy or something or somebody will spin it off in a different idea but i sure enjoyed you guys inviting me out here visiting with me and uh thanks a lot for that all right well we might have to have you back on to do one of your builds so we'll have to see about that most definitely future. most definitely yeah. yeah as long as you keep it simple <laughs> well hey. you keep building there right you you build you yeah. choose so yeah, you keep build it, it can't be too hard so <laughs> there you go all right yeah. all right guys Thank you. All right. Good night, we'll, guys. Thank we'll you very see, much. Good night. We'll see you at the end of the month. Thank you. Thank you.